In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this looping grunge text animation. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the video shop. I saw this animation by Pixray underscore, or is it just Pixray? I believe it's jogging or yogging. It might be a soft J. Anyway, I wanted to try and crack out what it's done. So credit to them. There's a link for their Instagram below. When I was trying to replicate this animation, it sort of became something else. And I was also trying to bring in the vibe of this poster here that I've got in my office. Apparently my influences are essentially limited to what I can see on my screen or on my wall. Also, this is the second tutorial looking at the liquify effect. If you haven't watched this one yet, you might want to check it out. What I find interesting is you can use the same font and effects, and then depending on what you add, you can get dramatically different results. What I think is interesting anyway. F*** it, let's get started. Click on this icon here to create a new composition. We want normal HD dimensions, 19, 20, 10, 80, 10 seconds duration, but the frame rate we're going to use is a whopping 240. That's because we'll be using time displacement and it's going to slow down After Effects unless you have a much faster computer than me or we pre-render it, which is what we're going to do. Background color doesn't really matter, but since we're creating an animation with a dark background, let's go with black. Let's name the comp 01 text time displaced and we'll pop it in our pre-comps folder. Create a new text layer, type warped, I'm using a font called Genera Alt Black, but something like Monstrat Black will work just as well. And I'm setting the size to 260, then lovingly kern. Now let's switch to frames on our timeline window so we're all on the same page. We're going to have our text move up and down first, so let's start by centering the anchor point. You'll see why in a second, but I think it's good practice generally. Then press P for position and we'll separate the dimensions. I think you can set this as a default now in After Effects. We don't have to be super anal about values for the next bit. Basically, we want the text animating up and down. So let's bring up our title safe and we'll have the text start here flush at the bottom against what used to be the action safe but now with HDTVs and online content it's virtually meaningless. Add a Y position keyframe at frame 0 in your timeline then move to frame 360 we can just type 360 in here then we'll move the text to the top here then move to frame 720 copy and paste your first keyframe. Next select all the keyframes and press F9 to easy ease then we'll go into the graph editor and let's make sure that we're looking at the value graph this bit's somewhat personal preference, but we want something like this, which will give us a zippy movement. Now I'm previewing here, and obviously it doesn't look zippy at all, but trust me, later on it will. It's previewing slowly because we're on 240 frames a second. Actually, I'm gonna go in and adjust the curves a bit more. Next, we'll all click on the stopwatch icon and we'll add the cycle loop and expression. I'll put this in the description below so you can copy and paste it if you need to. Then if we click here, which is the show post expression graph, we can see what it's doing for us. The solid line here is the keyframed movement and the dash line here is the expression taken over. Let's drag a comp marker to frame 360. And usually I go here and do add 720 so that After Effects can do the math for us. But for some reason that doesn't work here. Works almost everywhere else. Maybe someone who's smarter than me can tell me why in the comments. Anyway, get out my calculator and 360 plus 720 is 1080. I'm just checking your math on that. Yes, I got the same thing. So we'll drag another marker over to 1080 and then we can toggle between those two points to see that it loops. If the one and two keys don't work for you, you can fix in the settings here. Now we'll set our work area using the B and N keys. So the first frame of our work area will be 360 and the last one is 1079. Otherwise we'd double up on a frame and that would be catastrophic. I'm gonna drop the quality to third in our comp windows. We don't need it full res. And I'll preview again. Yep, still slower than a Terence Malick film. So we jump ahead to here to the final render and the text goes upside down. I know, crazy. I'll press Shift E to bring up the scale. Set a keyframe. Make it a hold keyframe by clicking on it with the Control and Alt keys held. We want to flip the scale when the movement is quickest, which is here where the curve is steepest in the graph editor. Actually, I'll make those curves even steeper here. And then unconstrain the proportions, which is this button here. Then flip it to minus 100 on the Y here. Because we centered our anchor point earlier, this works fine. Now, depending on what you guys and girls end up animating, set your next keyframe where the line is the steepest on the Y position graph editor curve. That's essentially making the switch when the movement is the quickest, a common motion design trick. Then copy and paste the first keyframe. Next, we're going to take this rather mundane animation and turn it into a slice of fried gold. Add an adjustment layer and we'll call it time. Then grab the time displacement effect and pop it on the adjustment layer. This effect needs a luma mat. So grab the rectangle tool and double click to create a new shape layer. Then turn off any fills and strokes you might have and we'll add a gradient fill. By default it's white to black, we'll just jump to the start and end points and we'll have it going from minus 550 to 550. Rename it time mat, move to the bottom of the layer stack for neatness and we'll turn it off since it doesn't need to be visible. Now go to the time displacement effect and drop down the layer option and select the time mat layer. We don't want a whole second displacement, so set the max displacement to 0.2. It's gonna look blocky like this. 
so we'll bump up the amount to double our frame rate which is 480. But since we're going for a grungy dirty kind of look anyway let's add some noise to that time matte layer. We'll set it to 10% and then go back to our time displacement effect settings and drop this down so it uses whatever effects are applied. Now it sort of reminded me of the post of The Shining and I'm 100% on board with that. Anyway, this is just one look. This is a part of the process where if you're following along, you should play around, try different methods, luma mats, and just see what works. Here I've added fractal noise instead of just noise at the matte layer. Just have fun and see what you get. So we'll add that to the render queue. You want to render a ProRes with alpha. And we end up with this. Next, we're going to liquefy the text. I've imported that render and we'll drag it onto the new comp icon. Name that new composition O2 liquefy text and pop it in the pre comps folder. In comp settings, I'll change the frame rate to 24. When we apply the liquify effect, it's helpful to have a visual guide for how the distortion is working. So I'll go into the O1 comp and copy the text layer, paste it into the O2 comp and press EE to reveal expressions and alt click to remove the loop expression. Then get rid of all the keyframes. Press T and drop the opacity to 30. Then copy and paste the text a bunch of times and reduce the legend. Now we'll duplicate the animation layer and move the copy along so we've got our start and end points on the same frame. We want to just all in between those points only, hence having our guide text. Now add an adjustment layer and drag the liquify effect onto it. Let's name the layer liquify and then go to the effects panel. We want to use the warp tool, which is this one here, top left. We could turn this mesh on to see the distortion, but we'll leave it off as we have our guide text. I would increase the brush size and pressure to 70 though. And this part will be impossible to replicate exactly, so I definitely encourage you to play around and see what results you get. I'm just randomly distorting with no particular rhyme or reason. I've said it before in other tutorials and I'll say it here again. Play around, have fun. I'll turn off the guide text layer and delete the duplicate animation layer. And then let's set the end of our work area using the N key. Not too shabby. We can beef up the distortion though if we like, or reduce it. So I'm gonna keyframe it from 50 to 150% and then back to 50. And then if I copy and paste those keyframes here, those values are looped. So we start at 50, go to 150, back to 50, and then again. Now preview again. Cool. Next, we're gonna add some more time displacement to distress the text, which will take it from this to this. They're both kind of interesting and it really depends on how far you want to push the distortion. The poster I mentioned earlier kind of took over and I started ignoring the original reference. So I think I was kind of leaning into the grunginess of these bits here and here. So whereas before we used a linear ramp for the time displacement, we can get more interesting results if we use something like this and we'll even have that animate. I'm not gonna recreate this step by step, but I've uploaded the whole workflow for this animation to my sister channel, the Video Shop Long Play, and you can also download the free project file in the link below. This is the revised comp. I've added timeline markers and there's a new adjustment layer for the time displacement. That's referenced in this pre-comp here that I showed you before. If we double click on it, we've got another pre-comp at the bottom. This is getting a bit inception. And if we go into that, the bottom layer is a shape layer with a gradient and turbulent displacement applied. Then a fractal noise layer using the swirly preset. This is animated so it loops and that's set to color burn. Then I bump the curves way up with an adjustment layer. So that comp is scaled and rotated. Then I've added a bit more black here. Then an adjustment layer to get rid of the softness and adding in some noise. Again, these are all things you can take or leave and this layer here adding in some white to the edge. The time displacement which references this comp is only set to 0.1 as we don't want it too crazy. Well, you might, but I don't. If we bump it up to 0.3, you can see it sends the text all over the place here, which is a bit much. I've also keyframed it from zero to 0.1 so that when the text resolves, it's relatively undistorted. Now we can look at the final comp. We've got a black solid and a photocopy texture set to 60% opacity. Then I brought in the O2 liquify text comp, but time remapped it so that the overall animation is a bit quicker, from three seconds down to two. 
but by time remapping, we can choose to linger on the distortion a little bit more by adjusting these curves. So that gives us this. The text is using this comp as a Luma inverted map, which is just more photocopy textures. Then we've got a duplicate of that text with a red fill. And that's using this texture as a Luma map. And I've set that to multiply so the red is more prominent when it's overlaid on the white text. That's shifted forward by one frame, so you get this overlap. And the time remap keyframes have got the same looping expression we used earlier. Then we have an adjustment layer with levels and curves, just bumping up the overall luma. And also a compound blur. This uses this matte layer here and gives a very subtle blur just at the top and bottom. We're getting into macro level fine tuning here, but sometimes little touches like this can help things feel a bit more organic. I'm not sure how much it registers, but it's there. Lastly, we have more curves. Just pulling back on the red and adding a very subtle amount of blue. And then boosting the overall whiteness a bit more. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you again next time.